Stormy Daniels is facing backlash today for her gripping but graphic testimony at the Trump hush money trial. Yesterday's testimony was so cringy and so tawdry and salacious to me. Did she go too far? Divulging the explicit details of her alleged one night stand with Trump. It's legally irrelevant. It shouldn't have been in there. Cross exam. Boy, her responses were disastrous. I mean, do you hate Donald Trump? Yes, of course she does. That's a big deal. When the witness hates the person whose liberty is at stake, that's a big damn deal. Some of what she said might generate a little sympathy for Trump because for all today was fascinating, and I'm sure everybody's fascinated as was I, it, it, most of it's just not relevant. Stormy Daniels will be back on the witness stand today where she is reportedly expected to face a longer cross-examination. Now, much of Daniels' testimony on Tuesday was deemed by many, including the judge, as unrelated to the case, but the judge still rejected a motion for a mistrial. Gene, as to this longer cross-examination, makes sense to me. A longer cross gives Stormy Daniels more time to self-destruct on the stand. Bad for the prosecution, great for the defense. Your thoughts? You're absolutely right, Todd. That is exactly the purpose of an effective cross-examination. You have to undermine the witness's credibility and show to the jury that what she is saying might, in fact, not be true. And then she did that on her own, self-imploding with statements that she made she didn't even have to make on Tuesday, which go to show to the jury her animus in bringing these claims and these charges uh, against Donald Trump. Yeah, when she says, I hate Trump, I want him to go to jail, you know, the defense is pretty much cheering because the jury hears that and thinks some bad things about Stormy Daniels. And you know it's bad, Gene, when even the left-wing media acknowledges how bad Stormy Daniels was for their well, case. Stormy Daniels was called to the witness stand for only one purpose, Sean, to slime Trump. But she's peddled so many conflicting stories. You, you know, you get whiplash on cross-examination, though. She withered. She was confronted with hard evidence that her motive was greed, hatred of Trump. Uh, hashtag me too. This is not a me too. I did remember a little more of the words that he said to me because originally I didn't know that they were that important because they weren't direct threats. It was more like... I thought you wanted to be a, you know, I thought you wanted to be successful. You have to show me what it takes. It was a, that kind of thing. Mm. And I didn't really realize the gravity of that until I watched the movie. Here, I'm going to say the word again. Bombshell. That kind of thing. That, that kind of language is a qualifier, which means he may have said nothing of the sort. That kind of thing. He said, you know, this thing about power. Okay. So, you know, hopefully jurors saw her for what she is, a shakedown artist. It's her livelihood. And at one point, she unbelievably claimed, oh, I, I don't care about the money, uh, only making my story public. Well, if that's true, why did you agree to remain silent in exchange for big bags of money? She is so clueless, she walked right into it today. And as witnesses go, I'd say she self-destructed. Start with whether they had sex at all. Utterly irrelevant. The only issue is whether she threatened to expose him and whether she extorted him and whether he then paid money to avoid the embarrassment to his family, to his business, to his children, and, according to the prosecution, to help himself get reelected. The issue of what actually happened is utterly irrelevant. And then we get to the details, the silk pajamas, the kind of lotion he was wearing. The judge says, well, he didn't object enough. You know, in the Court of Appeals, they have a, a, a concept called chattering magpie. The courts warn lawyers, don't object too much. Object once and then just keep quiet. Don't become a chattering magpie. And this judge then says, well, well, they didn't object enough. Yeah, they objected before. Yeah, they objected during. Yeah, they objected after. Yeah, they sought um, uh, a dismissal and a mistrial. That's not good enough for me, Judge Marshawn, because I'm going to convict this guy no matter what. And I'm certainly not going to give a, um, uh, a mistrial, because I get a mistrial and maybe try before a different judge, and then my daughter won't make money. Uh, off this case. This is such a corrupt case from beginning to end. But it just shows you that these people aren't here for altruistic reasons and trying to make the country better. She has a personal vendetta. And if you look at the merits of the New York case, and I know it's very complicated, although I am an attorney, I'm no longer practicing, but what they were trying to get Donald Trump on 
would have been a slap on the wrist. It would have been a misdemeanor. And when they brought this case, no one wanted to bring it, by the way. The federal government, the DOJ, the FEC decided we don't want to do this. Even Alvin Bragg himself did not want to bring this case. But after pressure from the Biden administration, let's face it, they brought this case. And all of the allegations in the complaint were saying, underlying crime. We still don't know what that underlying crime is. So the long story made very short here is this case is also meritless. As Donald mm -hmm. Trump said, this is a witch hunt. And I think all it's going to take is one juror. They don't even have to be a Trump fan or a Trump supporter to say, this doesn't smell right. Because we know Alvin Bragg is a George Soros funded district attorney in New York City, where 60% of the felony cases have been reduced to misdemeanors. So you're reducing everyone else's case, but you're throwing the book at Donald Trump Something isn't adding up, and I think any reasonable person would realize this is what you see in third world banana republic dictatorships, not in the United States of America.